Hello, in this video we're going to go over a sample exam. So the first question is evaluate this uh, double iterated integral. So here is how we're going to solve it. So this is a pretty simple problem. So we'll start from the inside. So we'll integrate y with respect to x. So we get y x and then we'll have to plug in x equals 1 and x equals y and then integrate with respect to y 0 to 1. When we plug in x equals y, we get y squared. When we plug in x equals 1, we get y dy. Then we're going to integrate that. We get y cubed over 3 minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 1. Plug in 1, we get 1 third minus 1 half. And the other one is going to be 0. Okay, so the second part of this problem is evaluate this double integral uh, or double iterated integral. So as we know, sine of y squared cannot be integrated. So instead, what we need to do is to change that to a double integral and then use Fubini's theorem to change it to an iterated double integral uh, in terms of dx dy. So let's first draw the region corresponding to that. y goes from x to root pi. So x is right here and root pi is right here. So y goes from bottom of x to top of root pi and then x goes from 0 to root pi. So this is going to be the region. So if I call this region R then this uh, given uh, iterated double integral is the double integral over R of sine of y squared D A. Now this region is both horizontally simple and vertically simple. So we can use Fubini's theorem to change this one to a horizontally simple region. We're going to go this way. And if we do that, then we'll have to switch to dx dy. Now, what are the limits of x? They are 0 to y because this line is y equals x. So x goes from 0 right here x is 0 and right here x is y and then the limits of pi y are 0 to root pi okay so next we're going to integrate this one integral of sine of y squared is x sine of y squared since this is integral with respect to x and this is x equals 0 to x equals y integrating this we get 0 to root pi y sine of y squared dy because when we plug in 0 we get just 0. Now what is the integral of this? Integral of its sine is negative cosine but if you differentiate negative cosine of y squared we get sine of y squared times 2y so we have to divide by 2 and this one is from y equals 0 to y equals root pi. If we plug in the values we get cosine of um, y squared which is pi over 2 minus minus cosine of 0 over 2. What is cosine of pi? Cosine of pi is negative 1 so that would be 1 half and cosine of 1 y uh, 0 is 1. So the answer is in fact 1 for this part of the problem. So the next part of the problem is another double iterated integral. Um, so we are going to change this one to a double integral and then we're going to uh, do polar coordinates. So let's look at the region. The region is x is between 0 and root 1 minus x squared and y is between 0 and 1. Um, sorry, y squared here. So we're going to graph uh, x equals 0. x equals 0 is this one. So this is x equals uh, root 1 minus x squared, y squared. So this is the graph. So this is the region that they are talking about, but so it's only the top portion of this. So it's a quarter of a uh, disk of radius 1. So this is our region. So if I call this region R, then I can write down the given uh, double iterated integral as the double integral over r of e to the power of x squared plus y squared dA. 
Why would I do that? Because I can't really integrate e to the power of x squared dx. So I'll have to switch to polar. So we'll go ahead and switch to polar. So this would be e to the r squared. dA is r dr d theta. What are the limits of uh, r? They go from the origin to the circle, which is 1. And limits of theta, they go from 0 to pi over 2. So next is integration. So what is the integral of e to the power of r squared times r? That integral is e to the power of r squared divided by 2. And then we'll have to plug in r equals 0 and r equals 1 d theta. This is integral from 0 to pi over 2. When we plug in 1, we get e over 2. When we plug in 0, we get 1 half. And this d theta. And once we integrate with respect to theta, we get e minus 1 over 2 times theta from 0 to pi over 2. When we plug in pi over 2, we get pi over 2. When we plug in 0, we get 0. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. Let R be the region in the first uh, quadrant bounded by the x-axis, y-axis, and the curve. So let me graph this one. Always we need to graph the diagram. So x-axis, y-axis, and they also said it's in the first quadrant. And the curve y equals 2 minus x squared. So this is 2 uh, and this is a parabola. So the intersection with the x-axis is root 2. 2 minus x squared equals 0 gives us, and we know that x is positive, we know that that would give us x equals root 2. So this is our region. Set up an iterated integral uh, equal to this, you do not need to evaluate the integral. So this is the sketch of r. Now, if you look at this region, this is a vertically simple region. It is, in fact, also a horizontally simple region. So we can set up the integral using just Cartesian coordinates. So what would it be? We could do uh, the integrand, which is y. Instead of uh, dA, we could substitute by dy dx if we are doing it as a vertically simple region. Bottom of this region is 0, is y equals 0. Top is y equals 2 minus x squared. And limits of x are from the left of 0 to the right of root 2. So that is the integral. And they said do not evaluate, so that's all we need to do. Okay, so the next part is let E be the solid in the first octant inside the sphere and below the cone. So let's draw the diagram. We have a cone, but we only look at the portion that is inside the first octant. So only this portion is what matters. So we have something like this. So it is um, in the first octant. So let E be the solid in the first octant inside the sphere. So if you look at this sphere, we have this sphere. So it's inside this sphere and below the cone. So now, you would want to draw a diagram to understand what's going on. So it's below the cone and it's inside the sphere. So it's inside the sphere and below the cone. So it's a the region like this. It's in the first uh, octant only. So now, set up an integrated integral in spherical coordinates that is equal to this. So if you look at the um, row, what are the limits of row? Well, they go from the origin to the um, to the uh, sphere. So we will be able to write it down as 0 to 2 because the radius is 2. Integrand is rho cosine of phi. Uh, dv is rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Now limits of phi. The smallest value of phi is on the uh, on the cone. So what is the smallest value of phi? So we'll have to figure out what's the angle at the cone. So the cone is z equals uh, root x squared plus y squared, which can be written as rho cosine of phi, that's z, and this is r, so that's rho sine of phi. So that gives us tan of phi is 1, so pi over 4 is the angle. So the limit of integration would be from pi over 4, pi over 2, because it's only on the first 
uh, uh, octant. They said in, in the first octant. So these are the limits of integration, and the limits of integration for uh, for pi, because it's only in the first octant, it would be from zero to pi over two. So this is going to be the setup, and they said do not evaluate. So that would be our answer. Uh, okay. So the last part of the problem is the equation of uh, the equation r equals sine of theta is a cylinder. Uh, find the equation of the cylinder in Cartesian coordinates. So, what do we get? Uh, where do we get sine from? We know that y equals r sine of theta. So that means sine of theta is equal to y over r. So we can take it, plug it into the equation. We get y, r equals y over r, which gives us r squared equals y, which means x squared plus y squared equals y. To write it down as an equation of a cylinder. We'll have to complete this squared, which is what we're going to do. We get x squared plus y minus one half squared equals a quarter. So this would be our answer. Okay, so let's look at the next problem. Let S be the surface of revolution of the graph of y equals x squared around the x-axis. So we are going to draw the diagram for this one. So we have this on this side and this one on the other side. And once we rotate, we get a shape like this. Now, again, you don't have to like have a very accurate diagram, but it has to be shown. Um, it has to be uh, drawn because we need it in the next, next portions of the problem as well. So find the parametrization for this S. So what was the parametrization? If you look at a point X here, this is X squared. So that's the radius of that circle. So Y and Z come from polar coordinates. So a parametrization in terms of X and theta would be X coordinate. Y coordinate is F of X cosine of theta. And Z coordinate is F of X sine of theta. But no parametrization is complete without limits of parameter. So we have to specify what limits of x and theta are. Uh, so x is any real number, and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So that would be a parametrization. Find an equation of the tangent plane to, uh, to, the, uh, to s at that point. So in order to find the tangent plane, we'll have to find a normal vector to the tangent plane. So we'll have to find the partial with respect to x, which is 1, 2x cosine theta, 2x sine theta. And then r theta, which is 0, x squared minus x squared sine theta, x squared cosine of theta. Now at that point, we have x x squared cosine theta, x squared sine theta equals 1, 1 half root 3 over 2. So that tells us that x must be 1, cosine of theta must be 1 half, and sine of theta must be root 3 over 2. So this one has to be this, this would have to be that, and this would have to be this. So what does that mean? It means at this point that they gave us at 1, 1 half root 3 over 2, r sub x, partial with respect to x, is 1, 2 times 1 times 1 half, because uh, cosine was 1 half, 2, 1 root 3 over 2, which is 1, 1 root 3. And r sub theta, partial with respect to theta, is 0, negative 1 squared root 3 over 2, and 1 squared 1 half, which is 0, negative root 3 over 2, and 1 half. So now we'll have to find the cross product of these two. Cross product of these two becomes, eliminate the first column, we get 1 half plus 3 halves. Eliminate the second column, we get negative one half. And eliminate the last column, we get negative root three over two. And finally, the tangent plane is going to be two, which is the first component, times x minus one half minus a half, y minus one 
half, or I think this was one. So I'll just keep it as one. And then minus root three over two times x uh, times z minus root three over two equals zero. So this would be the equation of the tangent plane at the point that they gave us. Okay, so last problem. Let R be the region in the first quadrant between these two lines and between these two curves. So let's first sketch the graph of this. So y equals x, y equals root 3. So this is y equals x. This one is y equals root 3x. Maybe this is too steep. Um, y x times y equals 1 and x times y equals 2. So this would be our region. Okay, great. So that's the first part. And in fact, we have to include that even if they hadn't asked us to do so. Use an appropriate change of variables to evaluate this double integral. So we want to turn the sides into something that is nice. So one way of doing that would be to take u equals xy. That would turn the two sides, two hyperbolas, into constants. And then for the lines, you could choose v equals y over x. So let's see what we get. This gives us u, the, I'm going to, Right now, the boundary becomes, so the boundary uh, curves become, well, xy equals 1 becomes u equals 1. xy equals 2 becomes u equals 2. y equals x becomes v equals 1. y equals root 3x becomes v equals root 3. So the new region is going to look like this u v u is between 1 and 2 v is between 1 and root 3 so we get a shape like this so this is the new region okay so now we'll have to find the jacobian and evaluate the integral so what is the jacobian so the jacobian of x y relative to u v since we have u v in terms of x y we'll do the reciprocal one over so partial of u with respect to x is y partial of u with respect to y is x if we go back and look at the formulas u was x y so partial with respect to x is y partial with respect to y is x partial of v with respect to x that's negative y over x squared and partial of v with respect to y that is 1 over x that's 1 over y over x plus y over x which is 1 over 2v now we'll have to take the absolute value of this one but this is positive so double integral over r of integrand which was y squared dA is equal to so before we write it down write down that way write down the double integral we'll have to find out uh, what y squared is so how do we find y squared from these two if you multiply them you get y squared so uv is equal to y squared so this would be double integral uv then we have the jacobian 1 over 2v and then du dv now again this is positive so i don't need to uh, put the absolute value now we'll look at the limits of integration. U goes from 1 to 2. V goes from 1 to root 3. Now we'll integrate this. So we get integral from 1 to root 3. Integral from 1 to 2. V cancels. So we get one, U over 2 du dv. When we integrate this, this is a very easy integral to evaluate. We get U squared over 4 u equals 1 to u equals 2 and then dv when you plug in 2 we get 4 over 4 which is 1 minus a quarter and then integral of that would be v from 1 to root 3 so 1 minus a quarter that's root 3, uh, three fourth times root 3 
minus 1. So this would be our answer. Finally, the last part of the last problem is set up an iterated integral equal to this using polar coordinates. And do not evaluate this integral. So what do we need to do? We need to start from the uh, double integral of x, y, and we need to change this one to r d r d theta. So looking at the region, we'll have to look at this region. We'll have to find the limits of r. So what are the limits of r? I'm going to actually draw this one again down here because I'm going to have to use that diagram. So this is x, y equals 1, x, y equals 2. So this is x, y equals 1, x, y equals 2. Then we have y equals x, and then we have y equals root 3x. So what are the limits of r? Well, the smallest would be on this hyperbola, and the largest would be uh, on the other hyperbola. So x, y equals 1 gives us r cosine of theta, r sine of theta equals 1. So that gives us r equals 1 over root cosine of theta sine of theta theta. So those are the, uh, that's the smallest value of r. x, y equals 2 gives us something, this, something very similar. r squared cosine of theta sine of theta equals 2, which gives us r equals 2 over root cosine of theta sine of theta. So those are going to be the limits of r. And now the smallest value of theta would be this angle. What is this angle? That's pi over 4 because the slope is 1. This one, the slope is root 3. So tangent of what angle is root 3? That is pi over 3. So setting up the double integral of xy, we get integral. So the limits of r, as we saw, is 1 over root cosine theta sine theta to 2 over root cosine theta, sine theta. And then the integrand is x times y, so that is r squared cosine theta, sine theta. And then Jacobian, because we are switching to polar, is r dr d theta. And limits of uh, theta are from pi over 4 to pi over 3. And that brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.